No, that's not a wood lathe, and I am pretty certain you can't turn anything on it. But not to worry, this is a bonus video, so be sure to stay tuned for this Friday's wood turning video, where I have something very cool to show you, and it's perfect for this time of year. So what is this? It's the Longer Ray 5 10 watt laser. A little bit about the machine. It's very easy to assemble and get running, and that is an empty box it's already put together. The work area is 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters, and the maximum speed is 10,000 millimeters a minute. That's pretty fast. It has a full 10 watts of power, which should be good for cutting. They did say they would send an air assist along with this, but they also told me afterwards that they were out and they will be sending it later, so I am looking forward to getting that. So. I'm not a sponsor of this machine, but I was asked if I would like to try it out, and that's what we will be doing. So it has a really cool touch screen. It gives you full control over the laser from the screen without being hooked up to a laptop. You can also load the files on a little SD card which comes with it, and run those programs without the laptop. But you do need a way to create those files. So one free program is called Laser GRBL, or Laser Gerbil and you can also purchase Lightburn. They both work really good and you can control the laser from both of those programs as well. So it'll run off the touch screen, a laptop, a computer, or Wi-Fi and I have not tried that. So let's get going and try it out. This is the touch screen that you can control the whole laser with this which is pretty cool. If you have a program loaded on here you can make adjustments with that set up you can control the location of the laser head with these buttons left and right and forward and back you can also zero it on your work so this is pretty easy pick engraving and the first three files what came on it I loaded the other ones I'm going to try this last one right here and then I We'll go ahead and make sure the zero point is in the right spot. And then it's just a matter of hitting and grade. This is what they provide to set the height for the focus. There's a little notch. Get it lined up there. Loosen the screws. Let that go down on it. And tighten it up. So, just get that out of your way, get your work position, I'll move the camera, and we can cut something. This is one of my favorite little characters from the past, Sylvester the Cat. So a little combination here. This is a wood turning I just did. It's a piece of oak, 8 inches in diameter, 3 quarter inches thick. I made it round, I put a little feature in here. I'll set it up, center it on the laser, and we'll start engraving it. It's going to take a while, and once it gets going, I'll tell you how long it takes in all the settings. What it's doing right now is filling little areas. This is a lot different than just cutting a line, which takes one pass. So we have little areas that need to be filled like the letters in here. So that's the main reason this takes longer than just running around and kind of etching a line in it. So I'm nearby to this while it's going on but I'm not standing right over it watching it. I have other things I'm doing and I have an estimate about how long it'll take so I come back and check it now and then but I'm still out in the shop nearby. This is a little plastic business card and I really found it a lot of fun to do and the engraving process here is filling so that you have a thicker letter from doing that.
On this machine, that fan comes on and it stays on the whole time you're using it. And that's probably a good thing to keep everything cool. I'm doing a little photo engraving and I find that really fascinating and the software I'm using allows you to adjust the image to try to get the best rendition of the photograph and it works quite well. While going through some old photos, I found this one. This was taken in 2008 when we got some really heavy snow. So we decided to go out and walk around in it for a couple minutes. But this photo helped me discover a setting that I don't think I had right. I let Lightburn discover the laser and I went with what it found. But I think it found the 5 watt laser because it was not getting full power. Once I discovered that, I could actually use the power I had it set on and run it twice as fast as what I'd been doing. So the time didn't come out exactly the way I was hoping on this, but the engraving came out pretty nice. I pointed this out because I think it's really important that your software matches what the machine is capable of doing. So this was really a lot of fun. Here I'm making a template for a wood turning. Now this is a turning that I did years ago to duplicate some spindles. And back then I created the template on my CNC milling machine and it took a lot longer than doing it here. So I found this to be a, a real benefit if I decide to make another spindle for sure. I found this file in the Christmas section of Lightburn and I'm guessing that it's a reindeer. I cut one of those out and it was really cool. I brought it inside and uh, I asked if she wanted a few more so I ended up cutting five of these and it really happens fast and it looked great. It's loose. I just didn't want to break it. Look at that. Is that cool? Oh boy, I know somebody's going to want me to make maybe how many how many reindeers was there? Cool. Very cool. Make some more. Well, as long as we're making Christmas things, let's go ahead and make a Christmas tree. I was really curious how thick of a piece of wood I could cut. This is a half inch piece of cherry and it went through it with two passes. I'm sure if I went with something like a three quarter inch I could get through it with maybe three or four passes. This happened pretty fast so I didn't bother speeding it up at all. Everything else I tried to condense it and run it at 5x just to try to keep it a little bit more enjoyable to watch. Well, I think I showed you quite a variety of things the machine will do, but there's one thing I was really hoping that I could show you, and I was expecting air assist, and I had everything planned out, and I actually purchased this honeycomb bed in anticipation of it, and this will help with that project. It involves some very expensive woods, and it's 100% connected to wood turning, so when I get set up, I definitely will be showing you that because I think it's really going to be a benefit to what I'm doing. I should tell you about two special features, safety features, that the machine has. There's a flame detector that's right behind the touch pad. And it also has a detector on it if you should disturb the machine. If it should slip off of your bench, it'll shut itself off, 
and it'll start beeping. So I'm not going to start a fire to show you that, but I will show you if you disturb the machine. All right, so you're running, your part's doing good, you think everything's fine, something happens, it slips. Shut itself off, and it starts beeping, and it will beep until you come and shut it off. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. So I think what I'll do is get everything I made set up, and I'll talk about those a little bit, and you can see exactly what they look like up much closer. So I'll see you just in a short while. I'll show you all the engravings I just did, and it would be a lot easier to see them this way. And this is Sylvester the cat, and this was really quick to do, and it was a lot of fun. This is the clock that I made. I turned a piece of oak, three-quarter inch thick, and then I did all the engraving on it. All of this was created using Lightburn software, and that was an image that was in there, and I chose that. You could put any image you want in it, and that was a lot of fun, and it was some wood turning. The honeycomb bed that I bought came with these little plastic cards to play with. And I put the Papa 1947, turn it, don't burn it. I thought that was pretty cool to do. Then there's this photograph. I really like this a lot. And that's a photo that we've had since, I guess, 2008 when this snowed and we took a picture out in front. So that was a lot of fun to do. It took quite a while. And I'll add the actual photo at the end so you can compare the two, but I think that really looks cool. Another thing that you could do as a wood turner is make templates. And this would be a template for spindle turnings. And I don't do too much spindle work anymore, but when I did, I would always make a template and make it match. Because if you're doing multiples, this really comes in handy. And then there's the deer. Pretty cool. It was so cool that I made a whole batch of them. And of course you need a Christmas tree. And that was really easy to do and really fast. You can make a bunch of these and hang them all over the place. And I probably will. Also, I wanted to see how thick a wood it would cut. And I may have called this cherry, but it's, it's actually cedar. Half inch thick really quick and the machine just went right through it. I was pretty impressed with that. Well that is about it and I appreciate you watching this video. Make sure you stick around for the photos and until the next time see you later.